so it'd be really good to be actually able to take the light from the sun or something else in space and break it up into all its different wavelengths so that way we can learn a lot about what's going on. So how can you actually take the light and break it up into its components? So, so the great thing about it is light likes to do this naturally when it moves through different things. We're used to light moving through the Earth's atmosphere and through air, but light can move through different mediums as well. It can move through water, for instance, as you have taken this beautiful picture of a rainbow. It can also look through a very great thing we use in astronomy, that's glass. Yep. So generally speaking, when light goes through glass or water, or even the atmosphere to a limited extent, yep. um, it'll break up into its components. So you put a beam of white light in, the red light will be bent less, green light more, and blue light even more still. So this is refraction, right? This light is being yes. refracted through. Kind of like if you're in the ocean, you're trying to fish. The fish or yeah. the object is not where you think it is. And the, the crucial thing is this is actually a little bit wavelength dependent. The amount of refraction is not the same for red light compared to blue light. And so if you put a detector here, you could actually see the different, uh, the amount of red light here, green light there, and blue light there. Based on how much, essentially, it's being angled away. So here, courtesy of Wikipedia, is an example of this. They've got a light, put it through a slit, a piece of cardboard with a slit in it. And you can see that then goes through a prism and you get the red, green, blue light spread out. So what we're really seeing is a white light go through a little prism grating, something that's changing it, breaking up that colors of light. And we're actually seeing that image you showed us earlier of the different colors. That's right. Now, we don't generally use prisms in astronomy, though in fact my PhD was based on an objective prism survey. Um, but normally we use something called a diffraction grating we won't go into, but it has the same effect. The light bounces off or goes through the diffraction grating and is split up into its components. So you might get the light here with a bunch of mirrors and diffraction grating, and then they hit a detector. Um, and you'll get the purple, blue, green, yellow, red, and so on, all spread out. Okay. And so you can measure the intensity of all these things. Okay. And that is what a spectrum is. What does a spectrum look like? Well, typically, it's a graph. So we have the number of photons, which is essentially how much of that light, quantity-wise, almost, we're measuring versus the wavelength, the color. Yes, and I'm, both of us have spent an awful lot of our lives looking at these. Um, when I was a, a PhD student, I had my dorm room wallpapered with thousands of these, one from the equation. You, you almost just survey. think in wavelength spectra sometimes. Every morning I'd get up and look at another one and say, oh, that's a really interesting spectrum. <laughs> um, so let's have a bit of a guide to how you might interpret this. Let's say you had something, a spectrum that looks like this. This is something that only emits light at one wavelength. So there's no other light involved in this in this thing. There's no red or blue or whatever colors. It's just this. And in practice, it would be a laser. This is what lasers yeah. look like. They only emit at one wavelength. Because they're tuned to be only one wavelength. That's right. A more common spectrum in astronomy is something like this, where there's a a slope, which means it's actually emitting light at lots of different wavelengths. But at different intensities depending on those wavelengths. Yes, yeah, so this one's emitting a lot of light at this wavelength, less at this one, a bit more at that one, and so on. So this is what a typical spectrum will look like. It'll be some curve with high bits and low bits and telling you it's putting out energy at a whole range of wavelengths, more at some and less at others. So we can then start to understand that depending on where more intensity or more energy is being put out, there's more of that stuff being put out. That's right.